G'day guys, Jason from the Utter Farm here. I'm actually on the Utter Farm property today. What I'll be doing is installing my jumper cable across my gateway here. I'm going underground, so I'm going to go step by step show you guys the process which I do to put my line or cable underground and the reason why I'm going underground and not over top. I'm going to start by chipping off the top of this grass because it makes it so much easier to dig with your post hole shovel once the grass is taken off the top, that first inch. I've got a bit of conduit, electrical conduit here which is going to use underground. I've laid it down as a guide so when I'm chipping away I can sort of keep it in a straight line and not end up well off the mark by the time I get the other end. So I'll get into it, it's going to take a while. The next step is I'll grab me post hole shovel and I'll start trenching this out. The depth I'm making this trench to put the conduit in and run the wire through is about two thirds of a foot, which is roughly around that 200 mil mark. I've done, this is my third one this morning, I started at 5 o'clock this morning. It was a lot cooler then, supposed to be reaching the top of 35 today with the relative humidity around 65%, so probably not good timing on my behalf. I probably should have taped one of the early runs and it's a bit cooler. But I'll get stuck into it. As, as Nicole's favourite saying is, farms don't build themselves, you know. She loves that saying, she drinks out of the coffee cup all the time, I bought it for Christmas a few years back. I always remind her about that as well. She gets real impressed. Nearly halfway now, I told you it doesn't take long, especially when it's on fast forward times 10. I'll hold up chip chap, get back into it, it's not going to do itself. The trench has been finished, that's 8 inches or 200 mil all the way along. All the way along to that side of the gate. All we need to do now is get ready now and lay that conduit and run the cable through the pipe before we lay it. The only issue being is I haven't got enough consumables to finish the job. I didn't think I was going to get this far today. I had other jobs that didn't pan out. So I only had enough consumables to do the two. So I'll have to leave it here and I'll get up bright and early in the morning. Good morning wherever you are and I'll see you then. Morning all. Armed with supplies, we'll get this done. As you can see, it's starting to drizzle now. One extreme to the next. It was 34 degrees yesterday. Today I think it's only supposed to be a top of 31 but it's a lot cooler. It is humid but as you can see, it's starting to mist now. So I'm going to have to do this between showers. So I better crack into it. First thing I'm going to do is measure how much PVC I need. I'm going to cut that to length and then join just the straight sections.
the next thing I'm going to do is glue this together, just the bottom section, the straight section, and then we'll take the elbows off and we'll measure how much wire we need and feed that through. Because it's been raining, just got to make sure that's dry. Not only dry, got a bit of dirt in there when I dropped it into the bottom, so just give it a good clean out inside. And the other. Some people don't use the primer, I always use the primer. I might obviously make it for a reason. It's to help bond. Because PVC doesn't actually stick to the pipe. It actually, it's a chemical reaction. It actually melts the pipe together. That's why it's very hard. A lot of people, that's why you cannot really pull the joints apart once they've dry and down the track if you think oh that's wrong i'd fall apart it's only glue it's not glue it's actually a chemical bond chemical reaction between the glue and the pipe and it partially gets in there partially melts that pipe and bonds it together so i've got two clean now i find i don't put glue on both ends of my pipe. I just put it on the male fitting and slip it in the female. I just gotta make sure you twist it as you're going in with the glue to make sure the glue is actually getting around inside 360. So a slight twist, push it all the way in and that's enough. I like to go down on my pipe. If you go the other way, sweep back up, you're gonna get it on the internal of that pipe and you don't want it inside that's for sure so when you join it together just twist 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 push it in far as you can and that's it job's done that's a good seal the reason why i got to use a fair bit of glue there is i'm going underground i definitely don't want water sitting in this line when you're going above the ground especially with this stuff it's the the blue is really contrast on the orange and also worse when you use white PVC and when you try to do a neat tidy job with particularly particularly if it's at home you can get instead of getting blue you can get clear glue that way when it seals like this you don't haven't got that blue background it's a clear so you can't see the glue and it makes a real neat and tidy job so it says to let that sit for five minutes before attempting to play with it further so what we do in the meantime is we'll measure how much line on cable i need and we'll pre-cut the cable accordingly i know i need eight meters of cable and i need two of i'll get that sorted and then we'll come back and we'll thread it through the bottom of this pipe i find it easy especially when you're pushing more than one line through to tape the end together that way they stay together and don't fall apart this aluminium i'm using aluminium jumper cable here and aluminium is very pliable so it's going to be interesting, yesterday when I was pushing it through this section of pipe it tends to snake up the pipe and make it very difficult when you get towards the end, the last metre or three foot. So this could take a while. Hopefully it's uh, going to be rather easy because I've got the video camera going and it's going to be embarrassing if this takes me all day just to push this up this pipe. Alrighty, alrighty, so let's tape together. Start shooting it. This is almost exciting, this bit, watching the grass grow. So far I'm having a bit of luck here. It's making me look like a real expert today. Maybe because there might be a bit of water on this line too. You can buy slip glue if you have issues. If you have issues of getting your line through, you can buy slip glue with sprays on the cable and it helps the line slip through. The next thing I'll be doing is attaching these two sweep elbows to the bottom of that pipe. So we want to shred the cable through first. I know it's pretty hard at this point to glue it without threading it through because realising when you get to the bottom here that you won't be able to put it straight on because the cables are there. Get the 
lid back on that. I kicked it over before. Lucky I've got a second bottle. Would have been handy to put that lid back on that glue. It went, went everywhere then. Once again, broke up. That way you're not getting inside the pipe. All the way around. You want a good feel because this portion of it is still underground. Before it dries. Remember, it gives me a twist. All the way on. It doesn't take long now. I can't move that. Leave that in for five minutes. I'm going to leave this now sit to dry because this is the most important step. I've got to have that in the ground. I'm going to take that to the New Zealand A-frame brace. Because when I do the other sweep elbow at the other end, you need it. I need it standing 90 degrees parallel or perpendicular to the pipe at both ends. If you go to the other end and don't take note of this end and you glue it, it could be at 45, it could be at 90 and then it's no good to you. So let that dry. I'll tape that with 100 mile an hour tape to that post and then we'll put the other end on. Same again this end. As you can see, the other end I've taped to the timeless A-frame brace. So that way it's sitting vertical straight up, so I know this end's going to be the same. I want to be quick on this end. I'm not going to twist this pipe that's on my leg, the straight section, because in these wet conditions, that 100 mile an hour tape is going to come off that post, because the post is wet when I stuck it on. And I'm also not going to twist that when I go to push this bit of pipe on. I'm just going to do the elbow. Because if I twist it, it's going to pull it off and I'm not going to get 90. But I've got to be fast. Because once it sticks, it won't be getting it right. So once again, twist him on. Now this wheel, I've got to make sure it's 90. Fast as I can, it's got to come back. It's there. Beautiful. We'll set that sit for five minutes. And then we continue on up. The next thing I'm going to do is continue this up now and bring it up to about that height, just above that third wire. What I've got to say high for is, obviously this grass now is growing up against this fence. You can drive around with a quad and you can see if you've got any issues. Not that I'm expecting to have any, that's a good height. You can see through, that was down low, it'd be covered in grass. And also, this gives me room to move. I want to bring the wires down and join it to here. Also, I can then use these H posts and I can neatly join the jumper wires in here. So it's not far to go with a hot wire. And the reason why I've got two wires is this bottom one here is six inches off the ground. I'm going to use that as an earth. So to continue my earth on, I need two wires. One to go to the earth wire and the other jumper wire will come to this one, which would be a live wire. From there, I just jump each of my other five wires together so i'll have five live wires hot wires and one earth wire This top piece here, if I can find the part, I 
here it is. This top piece here is just going to be an elbow. I'm not going to glue that one on. The reason why I don't want to glue it on is if I've got to re ever replace these wires down the track, it's going to be tight to feed the new wires through this section. That's why I've got the big sweepers at the bottom because it's a, a nice bigger radius to run new line if you had to. Not that I'm expecting to run new jumper cable, but just in case you do, I don't want to have to go through and dig all this up just for that. So this is the last piece to go on. Feed that on. And this, will just, this is just going to be a push bit onto here. That'll just push on there and that's it. That way any time I'm going to end up using clamps. I'm going to clamp that onto the post to make it nice and neat. And then your wires will just jump out the end. We'll jump to this other end now and finish it off. It's going to be a bit higher. This one's going to sit up there. The other one I had, the third wire, this is going to sit probably even with that fifth wire. The reason I'm doing that, I'll save for another video. But right now, we'll measure this and we'll stick this end up. Or should I say, fuse or chemically bond this end up. Eight, ten. Eight, ten. Perfect. At this point, it would have been a perfect opportunity to put my clamps on now to hold that pipe onto this hatch post before I refill this trench with the soil. But once again, I forgot to purchase those, so that's going to be at a later date. So at the moment, all I'm going to use is my 100 mile an hour tape and tape it to the post so it makes it a lot easier when I'm filling this trench in. The three reasons why I've gone underground with this jumper cable is one, I reckon it looks a lot neater than going over top. You can hide the cables each end. You haven't got wires exposed going over top. You can hide them under the ground and put them in amongst the H posts without having that structure over top. So number two is you'll have to have a structure over top if you're going to run the jumper wires over. And to me that looks untidy some people like it but i like to keep my work neat and tidy also not only does you have the structure you've also got to maintain that structure as well and the third reason is if i want to bring an excavator through here or a truck to do work if you don't put that high enough there's potential of them hitting it on the way through or on the way out so i want to keep this space clear so when i want to get machinery in here in the future to do any work for me, I haven't got an issue with the height of that jumper wire going over top. The only thing left to do now is to fill this trench back in and job's done. I'll have to come back at a later date obviously and put those clips on, but that's, gonna, that's not going to happen today. So we'll get stuck into it and we'll fill this trench in. Only going to go a little bit at a time, perhaps an inch, two inches. That way I can get a little bit of compaction down on the soil. Otherwise we're going to have a big mound over top of this. Over time it'll settle down, but trying to keep that mound over top as low as possible.
Only the neighbours can see me at the moment. Looks like I'm doing a bit of a rain dance. From a distance, it would look a bit weird. It's bad enough, they already think I'm weird doing this regenerative farming. Running down pipes in the middle of a paddock. I brought a watering system in where I've got two perfectly good dams and a creek and a river. Wait till they see the cells. That's it, job's done. All left to do now is put the wires on, join them to the hot wires and the earth wire. I'll do that at a later date. I'll give you a quick look at the finished product. On the way out, if you'd like to hit the like, the subscribe and the notification bell, it really helps build the channel. So have a good morning, have a terrific afternoon and an awesome evening guys, wherever you're watching us from and we'll catch you later.